All right, guys. Hey, here we go. It's Biff from Fearless Mods again. This is either a new episode or this is just another day. But we're getting ready to get this thing uh, on the road tomorrow after work to head uh, on a road trip to uh, Oklahoma City uh, for Thanksgiving with family. So there's a few things I want to get done. Uh, number one, I want to drain the fluid from the diff and transmission uh, at the front as well as the diff in the rear and go ahead and replace that fluid. We've got some OEM fluid right here that we picked up. Uh, the other thing I want to do is replace the two serpentine belts. Um, number one, they've had a lot of that uh, battery acid on them and I think they're a little bit loose. I get, I'm getting some squeal and some uh, a little bit of uh, feedback or jerkiness in the in the steering through the power steering rack which is a hydraulic kind, not, not electric. And so uh, rather than just tightening that belt and risking it breaking because of having been subjected to battery acid and, and whatnot, I'm just going to go ahead and replace both of the belts. Uh, that's number two. And then number three is potentially getting back under the fuse box again in one last ditch effort to try to fix those secondary air valves by, uh, I believe, maybe the two fuses. It, you know, it may not have been after all that that was a WRX. It could have been an STI. I don't know, but it could have just been from a different year. And when that happens, a lot of times you have different colors of wires, different uh, wire paths and patterns, and they just change small things for whatever reason. Um, and so I think that maybe the two relays could be swapped, the left hand and right hand valve uh, being on uh, air cut relay one and two maybe are supposed to be on two and one for that order. So anyway, that's something that we'll try to get to maybe at the end here, uh, but bottom line, let's get to changing that oil and let's get to changing those belts. All right, so this should be showing up for you here, hopefully. Um, went and got a T70 Torx, which will get us into this one. Nice to have the right tool. Drain pan under here. Hello. Lots of fairly clean looking fluid. Really doesn't hold all that much, which is surprising. And I was just thinking to myself, Self, you had gloves on before you went to the parts store to pick up this socket. Why didn't you put them on? <laughs> anyway. Cap we pulled out of here. Inspect the, inspecting the gasket. It looks good. I'm not going to replace that. But uh, it has a magnetic tip on here. And so it's interesting to note, you can see the metal. Um, I've already wiped it off once, but I put it back on and you can see the magnetic line up all the metal pieces. So there's quite a bit of metal in that. Look at when I put it on there, how, see the pieces starting to stick to it and take that shape. So there's some, uh, definitely some metal in there. So it's good that we're changing it out. We'll go ahead and clean that off. It looks pretty clean, but it has a little bit of a burnt smell to it, so uh, I don't think this is a bad thing. Um, I'm at 13,000 miles exactly, so probably not a bad idea to go ahead and do this now. Got that one draining now. Let's see if we can go ahead and get these other ones out. This, this is the uh, fill port here. That one obviously should be empty and free of chips for as high as it is up in the system. And then now we'll get the last drain plug out here. So this is the front differential or drain out of front essentially transmission side. Good pop. So this one will also drain, so I'm going to get it 
Ready to get my hands wet again, but with gloves this time. Oh, it's got my leg too. So supposedly this takes 3.6 quarts. And the good news is there's no metal chips on uh, on this one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this front one back in. Okay, so 52 on this one for pounds of torque and then 37 on the other one. What I'm gonna do is get a squeeze bottle so I can use the, uh, cause I have quart jugs. And rather than try to do this all above my head here, um, I think I'm going to get it into a squeeze bottle so I can just squeeze it in there. What I've done is I've just put the oil into this squeeze bottle, um, emptied out and put it in there. It is not the brand you see there. It is uh, straight from Subaru. Uh, high performance gear oil 7590 that was 7590 as well but so I'm going to try to now get this up here and see what I can do to get the oil into the transmission it's probably going to be a process Okay, bottle number two. Two quarts. Quart number three. Coming at you. <clears throat> okay, three quarts. Supposedly it takes about 0.6 more. So we'll see how good my BMW parts guy is because it said 3.6 Imperial quarts, 4.3 US quarts. I said I'm doing the front and the rear transmission, I'm doing the front transmission and diff and I'm doing the rear diff and give me what I need for that. And so he gives me four quarts. This one apparently takes 4.3, not even including the rear which is only about a quart, but still. Come on, dude. Chance to sell some stuff. There it is. It's coming out. Make sure it settles down in there, which it should already be. Now we're going to do the finger check. Clean finger. Straight in to the knuckle, if I can, and then dip it down. And the tip of my finger is still dry. So to me, yeah, it's not up there yet. Get every last little bit since I'm about a third of a quart shy. Thank you very much. This is dry pinky test again. I like that look better. Yeah, that looks like it's right up just below. So that will suffice, but we're not gonna be able to do the rear diff today. Okay guys, so now <clears throat> time to go ahead and uh, get this rear diff. We've got the extra fluid. I think I got the right socket here, yes. So it's 24 millimeter to get up in here and get the sensor. A 17, yep. Good 
good catch. It's glugging, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the uh, sensor up here. And while that's draining, I'm going to go clean my hand up. Yeah, you can see right there, a little bit of uh, metal shavings on that one too. Um, residue on the magnet on there. So even on the rear diff, we had a little bit of a little bit of that going on. That could all just be from when it was new, uh, and just you know breaking in. Now you can see that's nice and cleaned out. So we'll be good to go. Probably should have brought a paper towel down here. This is gonna be fun trying to get a bottle up in here and fill that up. All right, so we got it in it. A squeezed bottle. Uh, again, this was uh, about. This one takes, uh, I didn't double check it, it's somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, like 1.7 quarts. So we will get our cells set up and then uh, with the third of a quart that's left, we can go back up front and fill that one. This is gonna be a joy. It's gonna be joy, joy, joy. Oh, stop. Hey, at least I got gloves on this time. No panicking viewers. Amazed that I let oil get on my hands. Fill this with the second quart. <clears throat> and there we go. Ooh, yeah, I it. There we go. So that's full. We actually have probably about a half a quart left, it would seem. Now let's get this back in here. It's definitely topped off. Well, that's a pretty easy job, guys. The rear diff is done. All right, so let's go ahead and pop some of these things out here. Fairly loose. Might be part of the reason it's squealing here on me. So uh, let's see if we can slap a 12 on there and get this done. That doesn't work until you loosen that. Okay, I'm a little scared of this, but I think I'm going to tackle it. Uh, it says in the manual, cut this off, and then you have different tools that screw into here to hold the new belt on here, and then a method of cranking it around to, to feed it onto this pulley, almost like putting a tire onto a, uh, onto a rim. All right, here goes nothing. Removal is super simple. So I'm gonna take a wire brush and just kind of clean out these grooves because they look fairly dirty. Oh, beauty of all beauties. It comes with, so the hundred and whatever it was, nine dollars or whatever it was that it cost me for these two belts, may have been worth it after all because look at here. It comes with the tools to put it on. That is amazing. So let me show you what we got here. We got the bolt to put the little tool in the front. We've got the little tool that goes in the front. So 
this one will go, yeah, so it shows this will go into this hole. And, or that bottom hole maybe, there we go. Into that bottom hole like this. That's how it will go. And there's a guide across here that makes the bolt slides, or it makes the belt slide smoothly over these, these bosses here so they don't get messed up. So anyway, there's that. This plastic piece is the guide that will go on the front. You can see it's got the serpentine marks there. This will go on the front here like this after I rotate it to the right position. And that will be our, kind of like our, uh, on the tire rack, the thing that guides the tire up over the rim. This little retainer here is what's going to hold that on there. And so let's see how that all occurs. So there's an access hole. I'm gonna have to get a uh, socket here to make sure I've got the right size. 22 millimeter. So it cautions you not to turn this counterclockwise ever, only clockwise. So we will get this ready here. I don't know that there's any difference between any of them. So that's close enough to the top right now. So then what it says to do, so it says hook a new rear side belt onto the compressor. So that is hooked on there, and then, as shown in the figure, insert the claw of belt stopper A into the lower hole and attach with bolt C. There's the claw to the lower hole, different claw, the claw the lower bolt and attach with bolt C. That seems like this should be over here. There we go. So we got the belt on the outside of that. So then we set this on top of the pulley. It's got little tabs and teeth that go down into the thing. And then we're going to take this into the service hole so that it goes in between right here. There we go. So we've got that on there and in the service hole. So that is held on. So now it is going to be a matter of place the rib surface of the rear side belt onto the crank pulley groove. Slowly turn the crank pulley clockwise until the belt guide comes to approximately 45 degrees. So that's gonna say that's approximately 45 degrees. Place the rib surface of the rear side belt into the crank pulley groove so that the rear side belt comes in between the belt guide holder. So it's gonna go underneath. I'm gonna take this. Ooh, how is that supposed to happen? Yowza. This is supposed to go underneath that. So I'm going to slide that back a little. I'm going to put this on that, on that groove. Get all this back over here. Lined up. Setting down in there. I'm going to set this in that rear pulley. And push that across it. Like that. So it is... Hopefully you can see that it is behind, it is in the groove and behind that holder. So we're looking good there. Pull this back in its happy spot. There we go. Take out the slack. All right. Believe it or not, that's what the picture is looking like uh, online as well here. Place the tool through the loop and set on the pulley bolt. So see, I'm not through the loop there, so I'm gonna have to pull this off and, and reposition so that I'm through the loop. All right, so I'm through the loop, I'm on the bolt. That's all in here, this is all in here. Slack is out. While checking the following, slowly turn the crank pulley approximately 90 degrees clockwise so that the belt guide comes to the position shown in the figure, which is uh, 90 degrees, so it'll be 45 down. When turning the crank pulley, always make sure the belt guide is not off from the crank pulley groove. 
The rib of the belt should be securely placed in the groove of the AC compressor, not, not uh, angled on it. The rib of the rear side belt is securely placed in the groove of the crank pulley. Let's try turning this 90 degrees. Making sure that this stays in the groove. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Keep that on there like that. Now the fun part of I should have used a ratchet. Good. Approximately 90 degrees down. All right. That's where we are. Boy, that's going to stretch the crap out of the belt. That's crazy. While checking, slowly turn the crank pulley another 90 degrees so that the belt guide comes to the bottom 45. We want to make sure that the rear side belt is not twisting across the front. We don't want that to twist. We want to keep it straight like this. Still checking this top piece here. Make sure that we look good like that. So we're gonna go another 90 degrees here. So that's gonna to try to start twisting on us. We'll keep it doing that. Oh, come on, get out of that spot there. down here in the groove. This is looking good. Where are we? Another couple degrees. Okay. Good lord, that's crazy. Continue doing it and make sure you, it doesn't want you to go more than 330 degrees. Here it's going to pop up. And there we are. Oh boy, that is nuts. Never seen anything like that before. So remove the belt guide and the belt holder. All right, those things are off. That looks like it's done in there good. Now it says run it around slowly twice clockwise to seat the belt properly. There we go. That looks good. All right, now let's get the, the front side belt on. This one, much easier, just like the one we took off. on going down and I keep needing it to go down there we go we're like a lock so now let's get this stuff back on Belt job complete. Okay, got those two things done. Now let's get back to the wiring on the secondary air valve. Um, I'd taken a note that said that the left hand six pin connector had continuity with air cut relay number two. Problem is when I look here and I trace that pin number six that I was doing continuity with up here, it comes over to relay number one and by the way remember I had already said yesterday that they call it the right hand whereas the service manual I was looking at for 2015 was saying calling it a left hand so there's some nomenclature differences here left hand versus right hand 
one versus two. So I'm gonna try one last ditch effort here. I'm gonna get behind the fuse box and find the pins for the other relay and we'll actually swap these two pins to reverse the order of which way power is going to these two um, secondary air valves. Maybe the computer's getting screwed up because it's sending, it's not getting the reaction it thinks it should be getting out of some of these other signal points because it's trying to make this one do something and it's making this one do it instead and it's not getting the, the proper returns back. All right guys, man, fingers are crossed that we can have one electrical thing that has to do with a check engine light on one of these vehicles go right. So that went pretty quickly, swapping those around. Uh, when you have, I got some new screwdrivers from Harbor Freight so I could have the little jeweler screwdriver and get down in there, but um, all right, let's, uh, let's see what we got. Keys on. Uh, I already jumped both of the terminals so that I could confirm that the, the valves are still working. They're just swapped. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so it's got the codes. Let's go ahead and clear those. That's not a good sign, typically. So let's see what happens here. We haven't started this up since we changed it all and put the belts on, so we'll go ahead and let it run here a minute. No shuttering going on when I'm uh, moving the wheels, so that's a good sign. Hopefully we took care of some of that problem. I'm going to go ahead and try to I'll read the codes once real quick and then clear them again. Just won't stay off. <clears throat> so the only other thing I could, the only other thing I could figure, perhaps the air pump has a similar issue. I am going to run the wires back one more time for the air pump because the odd thing is is the one wire one of the wires that comes back is thicker than the, the other one and I don't understand why that would be the case when both of those secondary air valves are identical so it's possible that that thick wire could be the one that goes to the air pump so if I chase that wire and I find it going to a thin wire Ah, uh, then um, I might swap it and see. This is getting kind of crazy here, but uh, back with you as soon as I do that. All right, guys, uh, double check that and the relay, jumping from the relay to the air pump, and it's definitely operating. All right, guys, so we are a bust on the secondary air combination valve or whatever you want to call it, um, unfortunately. Uh, I'm not great at electrical uh, or circuitry, but I did feel like we gave it a pretty good effort there, digging in there and trying to find some stuff that may have been causing the problems and even, you know, getting outside of the comfort zone and, and switching some things around that, uh, that, yeah, normally chasing wires, that's not my forte, but um, at least we did get a little bit figured out. We got one of the, uh, the other relays working, so both relays are working. Right now, they're currently in a swapped configuration. Or are they? We don't know. Um, so it's probably going to involve me putting them back where they were and going to Subaru and letting them take a look on a diagnostic machine and see what they say. Um, worry about that later. It's drivable. It's been driving for 7,000 miles like that. We're going to keep going. Did get the diff and transmission fluid changed. Uh, so that's good. And we got new belts on the front. The, uh, the power steering seems to be behaving a little bit better. I think I have like a loose tie rod end uh, on that side, um, so I'll probably have to replace that at some point. I get some of the clunking going on up front, but all in all, I feel pretty comfortable, very comfortable actually, taking it on the road, going about 13 hours, uh, 850 miles, so um, uh, that's what's next, and then we'll dive back in and see what we can do on the Subi to maybe try to fix some of this stuff or move on to something else, so uh, we'll see. Um, Anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry this was a bunch of, uh, you know, stops and starts. We thought we were at the end and we're not, and then we think we're at the end and then we're not. But I just really, really wanted to get that fixed. I'm so determined to try to get that secondary air combination valve problem fixed without having to delete the thing. Um, but it's looking closer and closer like that's what we might do. Uh, anyway, it's running. 
uh, you're watching, so I appreciate you sticking with us this far. Look down at the bottom there and please make sure that you click that subscribe button. We're getting so close to a thousand um, and that's been kind of the milestone we've been shooting for for uh, since about, uh, since they stopped paying me back in say January um, so that we could get back over that mark again. But thank you for those of you who have subscribed and who have been loyal and keep on watching. And uh, sorry the content's been sporadic, um, but hey, we're doing the best we can and uh, hope you enjoy it. So take care guys, we'll see you soon.